We're ready for the part that we've all been waiting for, to introduce our wonderful honorees and to share a brief conversation with each one of these wonderful women. It is such an honor and privilege to introduce our first honoree, who I've had the pleasure of working with for many, many years. She is a wonderful friend uh, and mentor, both professionally and personally, and it's such a pleasure to introduce Elaine Graham. As you know, Elaine is a retired educator who's an excellent teacher and curriculum specialist, where I really had the pleasure of working with her for many years. She is dedicated to education and lifelong learning. She continues to serve our school district in many different ways, but her passion is as a mentor for Take Stock in Children, Manatee. She's a current board member and past chairman of the board. She is a tireless advocate for Take Stock. She promotes every aspect of the program, recruiting mentors and working to increase all the opportunities for students. She is active in both branches of AAUW and is a member of the League of Women Voters. So please congratulate Elaine again as we begin our conversation. So Elaine, please share with us who or what was a major influence in your life and how did it play out as you have lived? Well, since I've lived a while, why there are um, several aspects to that. Uh, Ohio Farm, community, family. Um, it was a place where everyone knew your name, who you belonged to, where you should be and when you should be there. Um, expectations, high expectations from parents, family, uh, aunts, uncles. The importance of education and reading. I continue to be very passionate about both of those. A move by our family to Florida just changed so many opportunities and experiences for me. Moving from a small, small Ohio town to the big city of Bradenton was, um, <laughs> and it wasn't so big when we moved here. Um, education, teaching, friendships. There are people in this room that started teaching when I did here in Bradenton. It's all about relationships. I continue to stress that. When I retired, I stressed relationship building, and it continues to be something that's part of the way I operate today, is, are all of those relationships. And um, there are just lots of people in this room who uh, have been models for me, and I kind of hope I'm like some of them when I finally grow up. Do you have a philosophy, saying, or quote that influences you? This is the one I figure there are some people holding their breaths in the room because of some of the things I say. One of my newer ones, and I think it's so important right now with everything going on, everyone can do something and everyone should do something. And that's kind of new for me, but... I always have to figure, is it a hill I'm going to die on? And um, I think you get the gist of that one. Sometimes I choose great, but other times I don't. One of the things I find myself using pretty frequently, and many people in this room have heard me say it, is, it's a dead horse, dismount. <laughs> I like the... <laughs> You can use any of these if you like. Um, the idea of it taking a village, really important. 
And then one that I really believe in passionately is scholarships, mentors, and hope. The motto for TikTok and Children Manatee. And what advice would you give a young woman beginning her life's work? We had a take stock race recently. I'm not sure when it was, but it was very recent. I saw my first mentee, and she's working in Orlando. She's gainfully employed, and she also is finishing her master's degree in December. And I talked to her, I said, you know, how do you like your work? You know, what's, what do you feel about the job you're doing? She said, you know, most days I get up and it does not feel like I'm going to work. And I did a happy dance right there because if you can feel that about the work you do, you are in a perfect spot. You, you have found your place. If you can do that life's work and love it. Um, don't let fear keep you from pushing forward, from trying something new to um, venturing out and maybe out of your comfort zone. One of the quotes I found, and Steve chuckled when he realized I was doing this one, don't be intimidated by what you don't know. That can be your greatest strength and ensure that you do things differently from everyone else. And this is a quote from Sarah Blakely who developed Spanx. <laughs> Make sure that you have a spouse, a partner, someone around you who supports you. And, I'm, and your dreams and everything. And I won the lottery on that one with Steve because I could never do all I'm, I do without his support and um, sometimes his ability to ground me, but it doesn't always happen. What lesson was the hardest to learn? Well, I don't think I've learned it very well because um, I, I think saying no is very, very hard for me. And um, people I talk to, they say, well, you've failed retirement. You get an F in retirement because it's nothing like what some other people thought it might be. I am working with students, um, helping support them getting a post-secondary education. You know, it's come full circle for me. In, the importance of education was instilled in me early and now I'm working with students and continuing that cycle. As a mentor, I'm a guide on the side. Um, we've all lived a life with ups and downs, and now we can help mentor students navigate their journey. I can't imagine not doing the volunteer work I do. I can't imagine not sharing the experiences of a good life and a good work life. I loved teaching, and um, with others who perhaps are just beginning that experience. I get more out of the relationship I have with my mentees than they could possibly get from me. I just, I cannot stress that enough. Um, Jennifer and Katerin are here today, and um, they make me a better person. It keeps me thinking, working with them. It keeps me listening, which is hard for me to do. It keeps me engaged with young people, which helps us all. And it forces me to stretch. I, I guess the biggest thing is that I know I'm making a difference, or at least I hope I'm making a difference in lives of young people. Is there something we didn't ask that you'd like to share? I think we need to emphasize why we're here today. We're here today to support women and occasionally men who realize that, that education is important. They need our scholarship support because they're going to go back into education. They've, life has intervened. You know, life is a crazy roller coaster ride and things intervene and they keep us 
perhaps from staying on track. So we help women get back on track. AAUW is an important group for women. And I challenged every woman needs to be a part of a group that advocates and supports other women and families. And if you are not, then you do it today because it really makes a, a difference. The other thing that I have uh, really thrown myself into, body, soul, heart, heart, <laughs> is take stock in children. I came in cautious <laughs> and threw caution to the wind uh, very soon because this is just so important to provide scholarships for deserving students in Manatee County who can then achieve their dreams. And there is just nothing, nothing that makes you feel any better than being able to do that. Oprah says, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. I challenge you to be one. <laughs> and, and would you please introduce your family and guests? Well, I have some Take Stock family here. We have people who work with Take Stock, who volunteer with Take Stock, and of course we have the face and the voice of Take Stock, who is Diana Dill. And without her leadership, her passion, there is just no way we could not achieve um, uh, what, what we are able to do. I think of a lot of women in this group as part of my family because they're my AAUW family. And we go back a long ways in some cases, and in some cases there are new, newer people in the room that have uh, become a part of the family. Deb and Sydney Graham are here today, and I'm proud to say that Sydney in May is going to graduate from high school and SCF at the same time. As I mentioned, my first um, um, mentee is not here today, but she's working. But she told me she would be here in spirit. And, but I do have two with me today. Jennifer Caba just graduated from USF Sarasota Manatee in three years. That's quite an achievement. And when she graduated, she won the two top student awards from USF. And uh, that's pretty unheard of. That was a fantastic situation for her, but she's a fantastic young woman. Katerin is a senior at Southeast this month, but in May she will graduate from Southeast. And she is going to go to Mary Baldwin College. And um, she'll be going in the fall, but she's leaving next week. They're doing an overnight. They're flying her in to see the college and so forth, and so she gets that opportunity. Both of these young women, we ain't heard the last from either of them. <laughs> Sue Graham, sister-in-law, co-worker at the beginning, but she's always been a cheerleader for me and a devoted member of my sisterhood. My mother, Mary Frances Smith, 96 years young, strong and staunch supporter. <laughs> staunch supporter of, of everything I do. The only thing I ever do wrong is I don't comb my hair properly. <laughs> and sometimes she doesn't like my outfits. So, and Steve, what would I do without Steve? Best friend first, and then there was more to come. Um, he is my um, support team cheer person, and um, he's, he's been willing to travel this very wild ride with me. And I want to thank all of you for being here today and supporting us. I join an outstanding sorority today, and I am pleased to be a member. Thank you very much. So Elaine, today you've always been 
but today you join the ranks of AAUW's Women of Achievement for, as you continue to serve in the community. Please accept this candle holder symbolizing li our theme of lighting the way for others. Congratulations and thank you for all you do. Couldn't have been better. <laughs> Our next honoree is Eileen Oldwine. <laughs> Eileen started her career in the Peace Corps in Kenya and then worked as an educator with Planned Parenthood and as a training coordinator, training nurses and midwives from English-speaking Africa. From there, Eileen spent 21 years with the United States Agency for International Development uh, and was inducted into the Senior Foreign Service as Deputy Director. She is currently a consultant and trainer specializing in maternal and child health and a board member of UnWomen, uh, the Gulf Chapter. Please congratulate, uh, I opened, oh, is that wrong? UN Women. Oh, UN Women. <laughs> <laughs> the, the way it was written, UN Women. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So please congratulate Eileen. <laughs> My husband makes that joke. No, oh, well, good. <laughs> so would you share with us who or what was a major influence in your life and how did it play out as you have lived? Uh, I think first, it, sorry, first it was my parents. My, when my mother always said if when I would complain about being bored she would say get a book <laughs> read the newspaper and it was always expected that we would have high marks in school and go to college I was I mean I didn't wasn't asked if I wanted to go to college it was like you're going to college and you need to do everything you can to make it possible for you to go there and one of the reasons this award is so special to me is I, when I was a teenager, was a UN, uh, AUW scholarship kid. Wow. So I received a scholarship because yeah. in, in Binghamton, New York, scholarships were giving, given to high school seniors who were going to college. And so I um, won a scholarship from AUW and went to college. And also my mom, who was a lifelong member of AUW, also received a similar award as this. So this is very, yeah. very special to me. And probably the most important thing that happened to me was being a Peace Corps volunteer. Because, I mean, I was a kid from upstate New York who had never been out of the United States. And when I became a Peace Corps volunteer, I was in Kenya. It had only been independent for five years when I was a volunteer there. I was a volunteer in 1969. And so many children and mothers in my village were dying in childbirth or their babies were dying and it was b because of sanitation. And so I went to the nearest hospital in town which had a lot of British nurses and learned what to do and how to do health education for um, illiterate, uneducated women. And then that became my passion. And so I came home from the Peace Corps worked for Planned Parenthood and went to graduate school in, in public health. So those are probably the two biggest things that influenced my life. So do you have a philosophy saying or quote that influences you? I think my favorite quote is, if you learn, teach. If you receive, give. And this is, this is a quote from Maya Angelou. And I have tried to live my life by that. And so even now that I'm retired, that's what I do. I do training for people in developing countries in maternal and child health. Long time ago, a colleague of mine said, if you can just teach people to boil water and wash their hands with soap, you will do a lot of things in protecting people's health. Of course, it's much more complicated than that, and you get into the more minutia of the, of, the, of the profession. But basically, it's really teaching people what you know and teaching them in a way that is not condescending, that makes them a part of learning the experience um, and learning more about their culture because they will teach you more than you will ever teach them. 
but the basic things about public health is something that can really save a lot of lives, particularly the lives of women and children. And that's what I've done for the last 30 years. <laughs> so, and still am doing it, so. <laughs> So what advice would you give a young woman starting her life's work? Find something that you really, really like to do. If, and try a lot of different things. You may try some. I mean, I went to school. My plan was to be, get a PhD in Latin American history. That was my plan. <laughs> And that just didn't work out. As, as Elaine said, life intervenes and, you, and something happens and you take another turn. And try some things out. If it doesn't fit, if you're not happy doing it, try something else. But if it's something that you are really committed to and really want to do, then try and stick with it. It was funny when um, I met my husband in Sri Lanka and years later when we decided to get married, I said, be a great idea, but you have to come along with me because I really like doing what I am doing and it's so important to me. And if this is something you think you can do, follow me around the world, then we can get married. And he was great. He said, yeah, I can do that. And we've been married 28 years, so, <laughs> so it's, it's worked out really well. <laughs> so what lesson was the hardest to learn? For me, it's to recognize that other people know how to do their job. And, and to recognize that if you are a good leader, people will want to do a good job because of you are leading them and let them do their work and praise them. And to give constructive criticism, criticism that encourages them to do better. But it was very hard to let go when you are doing your thing in your box, you can make it all perfect. But when that box gets bigger and other people have to help you do your thing, you need to let them do it. And that was a very hard lesson for me to learn, that I had good people working for me and I needed to let them be good and be great and support them. And I hope I was successful at that. I, I still have people calling me up, so I guess maybe I was. <laughs> But I, I have really feel blessed that I had a great career both. I didn't work very much in the United States, but I did do training in the United States for people who are now going overseas to do what I did. So I feel that I've been really blessed to have had a wonderful career both stateside and internationally. And I hope to continue to do that for a few more years. I'm still doing it and enjoying it all the time. Is there something that we, uh, that we didn't ask that you'd like to share? Um, not really. I, I think that the main thing I'd like to share is that everybody needs to find out what it is that encourages them. As Elaine said, that makes you want to get up in the morning. And even when you're retired, I mean, a lot of us who are retired, we say, we're busier now than we've ever been. <laughs> you know, we're volunteering in our community, we're, we're giving back to our church or the organizations that we that support the goals. I mean, I do a lot of work with AUW, a lot of work with UN Women, um, a lot of work with um, Millennium Challenge Corporation, which is another international organization. I just think I also like to play. I mean, I, I like to, you know, hang out with my friends, but it can't be all work, but it can't be all play. You've got to try to create this balance in your life. And so far, I think I'm working on it. It's, <laughs> it's not perfect, but it will get there. <laughs> and would you please introduce your family and guests? Oh, okay. My husband, Jeremy Carter. And I have, I have so many, I mean, I'm so blessed. I have so many friends here. So I would like my, my Link sisters to stand. <laughs> And my UN Women Sisters to Stand. And my college friends to stand. <laughs> and my AAUW, I mean my, my um, AAUW friends to stand. That's everybody in this room. <laughs> and my USAID friends to stand. So I, my sister who has like my twin. And if you haven't noticed. 
People often mistake her for me. This is the first time in our lives that we have lived close, adult lives, that we have lived close to each other. She just lives in Tampa, and it has been just so wonderful for the two of us to, to be close in our retirement. So it's been really great. So, and not last but not least, somebody who keeps me fit is my trainer, Christina. <laughs> Well, Eileen, congratulations. Today you join the ranks of outstanding women of achievement as you continue to serve in our community. Please accept this candle holder symbolizing our theme of lighting the way for others. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations. Our next honoree is Sue Revel. Sue recently retired as Executive Director of the Manatee County Bar Association after 25 years of service. She has extensive history of community leadership and service in our area with her work through women's clubs, the Manatee River Fair Association, and Planned Parenthood. She is honored to have been named to the Board of Directors for Realize Bradenton and is passionate about the positive changes to Bradenton and the community at large. Please congratulate Sue. So would you share with us who or what was a major influence in your life and how did it play out as you have lived? Thank you so much, Linda. I'm, we were joking at our table, this is much like the Miss America pageant where, <laughs> where and my coach Charles Clapsaddle reminded me to stand up straight and speak into the microphone. So thank you for all of your, your help. That I think would have to be um, my mother. Uh, for I think for many of us is that's the first person that inspires you but uh, she was a single parent and uh, worked six days a week um, but she taught me the importance of whatever it takes doing whatever it takes uh, even the, though she worked six days a week that when I was a little girl she would drive me and drop me off at Sunday school on Sunday morning and um, but because she the things that were important so and I think I carried that on in my work with the Bar Association um, you do whatever it takes. If it means organizing, if it means taking out the trash at the end of the evening, we do that as volunteers and in the organizations that we are involved in. So um, we, do, we have to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a philosophy, saying, or quote that influences you? You know, when your children graduate from high school, you can add uh, something to their yearbooks. If you can, a little, some pictures of them when they were babies, the photographs that really embarrassed them to their, um, you know, their one day fiance or, or whoever it is. But, but I, I put this in both of my children's um, yearbooks and it's, it's kind of corny. But it says, these are rules, uh, simple rules and use them to guide you. Work hard. Be kind, don't smoke, be prompt, do your best, keep your word, eat sensibly, never get too big for your britches, mark your ballot carefully, avoid too much sun, mail your packages early, uh, trust in God and always remember that we couldn't love you even if you made A's in algebra. <laughs> we couldn't love you more. Um, so that, I think that's kind of a, a large, uh, a large uh, spectrum uh, of that. But uh, today in my retirement, uh, my, new, my new motto is um, life is short, uh, eat the cookies, uh, buy the shoes, Linda's done that well, <laughs> buy the shoes and uh, take the trip. So that's, that's uh, I think is reflective of where a lot of us are. Thank you. So what advice would you give to a young woman beginning her life's work? Take the high road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well said. What lesson was the hardest to learn? Taking the high road. <laughs> With age, I think, comes, comes wisdom. Uh, many of us that are, are re retired, uh, it's amazing how smart we get um, the older we become. So uh, taking the high road. 
And is there something we didn't ask that you'd like to share? Actually, I think some of the best stories are right here at these tables. I have nothing that I could add that would, anything I have would pale in the comparison to this collective, this, this group of, of just interesting people. And um, when we, the, the honorees got together um, before this event, we were sh sharing our stories, and I was far more fascinated in those stories than everyone else's because we all, uh, together, were quite a tapestry. So uh, take the time and, and just open that door with somebody that you don't know and, and ask those questions, and I think you'll walk away far more um, than when you began. Thank you. So would you please introduce your family and guests? Oh, I'm so happy to. My daughter, Emily Revel Buzzkirk, is here today. Emily, bye. Call my group, uh, my, my posse um, that, are, that have traveled here. My friends with Real Life Bradenton, who I'm so excited to, to, uh, to be with. It's uh, such an organization that, with such vibrance. If you haven't been downtown lately, and if you haven't seen the, the new murals on the parking garage, or if you haven't seen the, 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 the footprint art that is on now leading into the Village of the Arts, if you haven't walked the River Walk, uh, if you haven't been to uh, a Saturday morning market, um, just it's just amazing the stuff that's going on in downtown Bradenton, and I'm pleased to be with both of them, Kay White and Annie Breidinger, and that are here from Realize Bradenton, and then my longtime uh, longtime friends. I have uh, my Susan Wilcox, I have Karen France, Margaret Tusing, and I'm also happy to um, have as my guest today Wendy Marvel, who was a recipient of your very scholarship in 2003. And she and I are, are, uh, are friends in, uh, over in Palmetto, as I call north of the river. So, um, so I'm happy to, that they're all here today. Thank you. Well, Sue, congratulations and thank you. Today, you join the ranks of AAUW's Woman of Achievement for all the outstanding work that you do and continue to do in our community. Please accept this, symbolizing our theme of lighting the way for others. Thank Congratulations you. Thank you so and much. thank you. Thank you. Our next honoree is Rosalie Schaefer. Rosalie has held many leadership positions, including positions with the Baltimore Public Library, the U.S. National Marine Fisheries Service, and other health and education committees. She is currently president of the League of Women Voters of Manatee County. She is the force behind the voter guide that was distributed twice during the last election cycle and the hot topics information talks held six times annually at the Bradenton Women's Club. Rosalie coordinates the website, the social media, as well as participating in debates, voter registration, and forum. Please help me congratulate Rosalie. Thank you. So who or what was a major influence in your life, and how did it play out as you have lived? Okay, I'd have to first mention my mother. Uh, who uh, encouraged me to excel and loved me despite being rather difficult as I was. <laughs> and um, she never let me get away with anything, which is something I, I needed to learn in life. Secondly, the nuns at the Catholic school I attended. <laughs> they were the first career women I ever knew. And uh, they instilled a lot of um, values in the children they taught. They taught us that there were rewards to be had in being good and generous and performing public services, to give of ourselves, and that, yes, I really did have to do my homework. <laughs> I'm sure they all thought their words were falling on deaf ears, but they were not because I internalized them and trotted them out whenever I needed to encourage or admonish myself. I would call it beneficial nagging. <laughs> and I, I couldn't um, leave this, this topic until I thank my husband for being a good influence in my life. He has, he has been so very supportive he shares my interests and values, and um, he's always there to help me 
and he puts up with me. So that, that's really a big. And uh, okay, I think that's okay. it. And do you have a philosophy saying or quote that influences you? Yes. Women slip. <laughs> yes. I grew up in an era where the goal of every woman is to marry well and uh, be a good housewife. And it was, that was the image that was around us constantly. I grew up in a uh, blue collar working neighborhood and uh, there weren't that many high achievers there at the time. But a book was published in 1963, published by, uh, written by Betty Friedan. It was called The Feminine Mystique. And that reshaped my conceptions about the limitations and what a woman could do. She talked about the problem with no name, the feeling of unfulfillment of women. <coughs> they were, <coughs> they were raised to believe that being a housewife was a woman's entire destiny. Quote, a woman has got to be able to say and not feel guilty. Who am I and what do I want out of life? She mustn't feel selfish and neurotic if she has goals of her own outside of the family. Who knows what a woman can be when they are finally free to become themselves, she said. Who knows what a woman's intelligence will contribute when it can be nourished. Also, I like this quote from Granny D. How many of you have ever heard of Doris Granny D? Granny D Haddock walked over 3,200 miles across the continental U.S from California to Washington to advocate for campaign finance reform. She led a torch that is still burning and eventually will prevail. She said, never be discouraged from being an activist because people tell you that you will not succeed. You have already succeeded if you are out there representing truth or justice or compassion or fairness or love. What advice would you give a young woman starting her life's work? Don't just get a job. I think you've heard that a lot today. Get a choice that you want to live the rest of your life. Money is important, but it's not everything. Do something that you're interested in. When you love your job, it's not work anymore. It's a form of self-expression. And whenever you get to the point where you dread going to work every day, stop going. <laughs> Find another job. Life is too short to be miserable. Be persistent and follow your dream till you get it. I'm pretty fortunate it did take me a long time to combine my two interests in life. I was a book, uh, bookworm. I loved books and literature and research, and I loved science. I had bug collections. I, had, I would bring home things my mother would be totally disgusted with, you know, and keep it in charge. And um, I was always trying to learn more about science. So after some years in the library, I found a job with the National Marine Fishery Service as a librarian. <laughs> and it, w it was a combination of research and, and uh, library work. I loved it. I loved it. I loved going in every day. It was different. Every day was different. To have a job like that is, is just a real wonder. Be a, a volunteer. Nothing is more rewarding than helping others or being part of changes that make life better. Yes, I worked hard last election, but then I heard back from people who said, Thank you so much, League of Women Voters. I don't know what I would have done without your information. I wouldn't have, I probably would have left half of the ballot blank because I didn't know, you know, who I wanted to vote for. It feels good. And it happened because you were there. It's an amazing feeling. Of all the possible worlds, this is the one where you existed and this great thing happened. This life was saved 
or this child got to go to college, or this blind person got a guide dog. I chose the League of Women Voters to put my energies into because it has a broad-based goal to educate the voters and enlist them in active citizenship, to improve government and make it work better, and to work for an open government and to fight any attempts to prevent citizens from voting. And I'm so uh, lucky to have with me today a lot of the members of my board and members of the League, League of Women Voters, and they all work to make this happen. I'm not alone and I'm not the one doing everything. I could do nothing without their help. If uh, you all want to raise your hands, all the members of the League of Women Voters. Thank you. So what lesson was the hardest to learn? Be true to yourself. I had to learn not to allow myself to be discouraged by others who either wanted me to be like them or automatically throw up roadblocks for anyone who thinks differently or has new ideas. They say, you can't do that. There was a book out some years ago, and it was called Yes, I Can, written by Sammy Davis Jr., who had quite a few roadblocks. And I think that's a good motto. Don't let anyone tell you what you, who you can be and how high you can reach. Is there something we didn't ask that you'd like to share with us? What do you say to somebody who says, I don't have time? I say, yes, you do. You simply have to make public involvement a real priority in your life, right after your family, your job, and your other very important concerns. It has to be, if I don't do this, my life and the life of my children won't be as good. This isn't something you do when you run out of ball games to watch or video games to play. This is important as the air you breathe. Don't expect someone else to do this. It's up to you and all the people you can encourage to make our city, our county, our state, and the world a better place to live. And, what, and Rosalie, did you want to introduce any other families or guests? Have. Okay, well, come back. Wait, don't, wait. <laughs> well, um, congratulations and thank you. You joined the ranks of AAUW's Women of Achievement as you continue to serve in the community. Please accept as candle holder, symbol Eileen, our theme of lighting the way for others. Thank congratulations you. and thank you. Thank you very much. Our next honoree is Maria Zavala. Maria is honored for her work uh, empowering women and girls through the Manatee Women's Resource Center and through Whole Child Manatee. Maria is the founder and facilitator of the Latinas, celebrating Latinas and helping remove barriers to their progress. She is the author of the curriculum for the group. For the last 14 years, she's been an advisor for Whole Child Manatee, where she connects women and their families with needed resources. She's a contributed writer for the Bradenton Herald column, I Am Woman, Hear Me Write. She has her own radio show celebrating Wonder Woman in our community. Maria is a life coach, a highly awarded motivational speaker, and board member of Planned Parenthood. Please help me congratulate Maria. So Maria, who or what was a major influence in your life and how did it play out as you have lived? I don't know if it's a good thing to be the last speaker <laughs> or a bad thing, but you all are wonderful and I'm in great company. Um, 
I, it's the most interesting part about my life is that I was motivated at different phases in my life. So I've been motivated by positive and negative people in my life. And one of the first in, in my life was the woman who in, I, I had a very bad life, a very, uh, I grew up in a very poor community. I was raised in poverty and I was raised with people who did not at this point in my life really encourage success and really did not encourage education. And so school, since I was little, was my escape. I loved it. I loved reading. I, how many of you remember the bookmobiles? Oh my God, my first card, my first library card was the bookmobile and my little self running home with all of these piles of books that they trusted me to bring back. Um, it, was, it was the non-motivation that encouraged me to continue to be on the path of education in elementary school, but it was the woman in elementary school, an English teacher who looked at me and said, you know, you're really smart. She said I was intelligent, <laughs> and I had never heard those words from anyone in my life before. Since that day, I have been trying to find the diamonds in the rough, the women who don't see what I see. When that woman told me that every time I started to fall and I started to feel like maybe this time I can't get up, I would say, you know what, she said I was intelligent. Maybe that's how I'm going to get out of here. I went on and I found school and I kept really wonderful grades and then I get to high school and mind you, I'm 63 years old. And so during those time, it was right in the middle of all of the racial wars, right in my community, all of the civil rights movements and the women's rights movements and all of this stuff going on right in my own backyard. And I could not understand what was going on. But this time in college, I mean in high school, I went to my guidance counselor and I said, I want to go to college. And she told me I couldn't go to college. And I asked her why, and she said, because you're setting yourself up, dear. Why don't you be a secretary? So the best thing I could do was to say, I'll be an executive secretary. <laughs> so I was gonna be the best damn secretary that anybody ever had. The sad part was that during that time, what happened was that no one was encouraging me at home or in the street or in my community or in my friends or even in high school. And so I decided I didn't care anymore either, so I started skipping school. And I started smoking cigarettes and I started doing all kinds of things I shouldn't have been doing, I should have been studying. And I graduated with a very narrow margin. This is gonna be all the questions answered in one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't be afraid, I'm not still answering the first one. <laughs> I'm answering them all in one. So what happened was that I gave up too. I gave up on myself. But still that little voice in sixth grade that said, you're intelligent, kept going. And my father in the other year saying, you'll never amount to anything. And that little voice saying, you're intelligent. I went on and I got grandmothered into getting a license for social work. I was a licensed social worker. Yeah, I don't need to go to college. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> um, I started to cram all of the, everything that I could read, the journals, the, the psychological journals, the, everything I could get my hands on and I just devoured them. And one day a woman looked at me who was supervising me and told me in a meeting that she didn't want to hear from me because this was when you get to have a master's like me, then you can have an opinion at these meetings. So I couldn't wait to get a master's. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I didn't know how this was going to happen since I graduated, remember, with a very, very light. <laughs> I then started working with Latinas, and it was Puerto Rican young pregnant and parenting teens. 
And these pregnant parenting teens, were we were trying to help them to choose better, to make better choices. And one day working with them through a program that I had developed at Mount Holyoke College, I got the girls in the van and we're going back from this work we were doing at Mount Holyoke College and I said, okay, how many of you are signing up? How many of you are going to Mount Holyoke next year? You know what they told me? They said, that is a white school for very rich girls and that's not us. A year later, I applied at Mount Holyoke College. <laughs> And I applied because I wanted to go back and say to these young women, it's our school now. And I did just that. And those, I, those are all the people that actually inspired me along the way because if I'm told you can't, I wanna prove that you're wrong. And if you tell me I won't be able to, I will be the most persistent person in your life saying, I bet I will, you wait. So that's probably well, yeah. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a philosophy, saying or quote that influences you, that you want to share? Well, the most important one, and it just happened recently, as you can see, I'm between dues, <laughs> um, is that I got ovarian cancer and uh, I am healed, thank you. I am so healed, I am so happy, and I am so blessed. And what, what I, it used to be, if you asked me, Norzeal, if you asked me why I came into this world, I would tell you I came to live out loud. Uh, today, after this journey, I can say that little bird that sits on the branch and is not afraid of the branch breaking because she trusts her wings, that's my new saying today. And what advice would you give to a young woman starting her life's work? I wish someone had told me this a long time ago, but I guess it was somewhere relayed, and that is don't ever do. With Latina girls especially, they live between two worlds. So there's a private world, which is the traditional, the cultural, the you know home, private life. And then there's another world that they have to navigate on a regular basis, on a daily basis, and that's called the public world. Spanish, English, traditional, American and we live in these two worlds, usually one foot in each, trying to figure out who we are and where we belong. And we believe that there is a bridge that we can build between the two of them that's called bilingual, bicultural. You belong in both of these worlds very comfortably. What I want to say to especially those Latina girls just getting off now is don't do what is expected of you. Do what you dream of doing. And what lesson was the hardest to learn? <laughs> <laughs> My father used to say, wherever you go, if you start feeling doubts or you have that little thing about self-confidence, which I don't have a lot of problems with these <laughs> But he would say, wherever, you walk into the golf, golf course and you say, my daddy owns this building. <laughs> so for me, the hardest lesson to learn was to let go of the self-doubt and just walk in there like your daddy owns the damn building. <laughs> Is there something we didn't ask that you'd like to share? <laughs> Would you be surprised if I said no? <laughs> no, I think, I, I have to say that I have uh, fallen many, many times in my 63 years. And I have gotten up that many times. You know, Paulo Coelho says, you know, the, the whole point of life is to fall seven six times and get up seven, right? I've gotten up about 57. But that every single time I have gotten up and said, I'm happier, I'm stronger, and I'm better. 
because of that fall. And today I'm here to say that because of my cancer journey, I have fallen and I have gotten up and I am the happiest human being you will ever meet today. And I do owe it to an incredible group of women at the Women's Resource Center. And it, I, I, don't, I don't wanna get into it because I'm gonna start crying, but I, I am extremely happy today to be here and I've gotten up for the 57th time. <laughs> and would you, would you please introduce your family and guests? Yes. Um, my family is not here. I am uh, the oldest of nine, oldest of nine, seven sisters, and I, that's the family that I really wish was here with me today, my seven sisters, and I say hello to them. Um, unfortunately, many of my invitees could not be here today. They will be making some donations in the future, but I want to introduce you to at least a couple of people who are at my table who did help me along all of this way to see myself and, and love me through just about everything, all of that. Um, Mireya Monroy, my sister. <laughs> Ashley Brown, thank you so much. And that is my family, that's part of my family here in Florida at this time. Thank you. Well, Maria, thank you and congratulations. You are joining the ranks of AAUW's Outstanding Women of Achievement as you continue to serve in the community. Thank you so Please much. accept this um, candle holder symbolizing our theme of lighting the way for others. So congratulations thank and you thank, so you. We give, thank you. Thank you. We give kisses and hugs. Thank you. Such inspiring stories. Today we have added such wonderful women to our Women of Achievement. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate with us. Each of these dynamic women has made such a difference in the lives of others. Please help me congratulate them one more time.